We are very glad to be in your midst today. And we want to take the opportunity to thank God Almighty for such a, a, a wonderful time that he has given unto us. We again want to bless God that he has ushered us into another brand new day and for that matter, a brand new year. It isn't all people who have gotten it this way and therefore we are very glad and we want to bless the Lord for what he has done for us. Again, we want to bless the leadership of CHMI for allowing us to fellowship with you and to share even the word of God with you. I bring greetings from Ghana unto you all. And then again, from Heaven Seekers Ministry to you all. Say God bless you for this wonderful time. Before I go on to share the word of God, I want to sing this short song. To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, all I ask is to be like him through all life journey from f to glory all i ask is to be like him to be like g Sons, to be like Jesus, all I ask is to be like Him through all life journeys from earth to glory. All I ask is to be like him. Hallelujah. Brethren, if there is anything on this earth that any individual could search for, could labor for, could struggle for, then it is to be like Jesus. When one become like Jesus, oh, I don't know, the kind of joy that will flow through you. When we get to know Jesus, when we become like Jesus, when our lifestyle is like Jesus, when we hear what Jesus says, when we say what Jesus says, when we do what Jesus will do, Brethren, whether you are having money or not, you will feel the joy of the Lord. And as the Bible says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And therefore, when one becomes like Jesus, that person's life is so special. May the Lord help us that we will be like Jesus today. I pray at the same, Father, Lord Jesus, thank you for this moment. Have your own way, Lord. Speak to us. Lord, speak to me. Lord, speak to my beloved brethren. The Lord, your word, will have a stay in our lives. Your word will begin tr to transform us. That if the trumpet is sound now, none of us will find ourselves wanting. Thank you for answered prayer. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thus evening, brethren, I want to share with you. Please, I didn't say I want to pray to you. I want to share with you on the theme, are we good for nothing or good for something? Are we good for for nothing, or we are good 
for something. I don't know whether you have sat down to ask yourself this question before, that am I good for something? The kind of lifestyle that I'm leading, the kind of Christian life that I'm putting up, the kind of friends that I'm moving with, the work that I'm doing, am I really good for something? Can the Lord see me being good in that area? Can I be a pleasing aroma unto the Lord? Am I good for something or I'm good for nothing? How do we see ourselves today? There have been a number of times in life that we might have taken things for granted. But brethren, I think it's high time that we sit down and analyze the lifestyle that we are putting up to know whether we are good for something or we are good for nothing. I pray that none of us, including our children, including our children's children, including our extended family and a nucleus family, I pray that none of us will be good for nothing. Hallelujah. We are reading from the gospel according to Matthew chapter number five. I am just dwelling on the verse 13, verse one, three, verse 13. Matthew chapter five, verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his server, wherewith shall it be salted? It is then fought good for nothing, but to be cast out, to be trodden under foot of men. It is then fought good for nothing, but to be cast out first and to be trodden under foot of men. The Lord Jesus Christ, during his earthly ministry, the Bible tells us that when he heard about the arrest of John the Baptist, his forerunner, he quickly left Nazareth and he went to Capernaum. And from that time, he started his ministry, preaching alongside the coast, preaching in Galilee and the region of Galilee. And when you take your time to study the scriptures, he started calling certain people. It was then that he called Simon Peter, he called James, he called John and the other people. And... At a certain point of his ministry, he saw that people were gathering so much around him that he couldn't do any other thing than to go on top of the mountain. He wanted a platform where he could launch out the word of God onto the people. And brethren, when he started bringing out what we called the Sermon on the Mount, or the Beatitude, he started preaching about anything that he, he thinks that will help mankind, God, intended for us in the Garden of Eden, but because of sin, we have lost it. So the Lord Jesus talked about the lifestyle that we need to lead to enable us make heaven. Because he is a faithful God, because he's so loving a father, he could not hide any good thing from us. Brethren, no matter wherever we have reached, if only we will allow Jesus into our lives, we can not be good for nothing. But whatever lifestyle that we will be putting up, whatever lifestyle that even we are putting up at the moment, will be good for something great. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, 
as he continued to share the word, part of this elaborate sermon that the Lord gave on the mount, the Lord brought out this wonderful touching scripture, this very verse, which has transformed my personal life, and I believe it will transform your life as well. The Lord said, we are the salt of this earth. We are the salt of this world or earth. The question is, is there any home without salt? You can just imagine, if at about 99.99% of all the homes, of all the houses on earth contain salt, they have salt in one way or the other. It means salt is so important for every individual. If you are someone who doesn't take in salt, at least there is salt in something that you take in, either in medicine or in a, a, an item of food. There is salt. It tells us that salt is something that we cannot do away with. Salt is something that no human being or no home can live without it. And this is the very thing that the Lord equated our lives to. Meaning the Lord Jesus want to see me, want to see you to be people whose life are so pleasing to God Almighty. Are we good for nothing or we are good for something? He said, we are the salt of the earth. But if we do not take care of this saltiness that is within us and we lose this the saltiness in us will become good for nothing. Brethren, the day is coming that every salt will appear before the great king. Every individual, pastor, bishop, the general apostle, whosoever, we are going to appear before the great judge. What salt are you going to be? What salt am I going to be? Are we going to be the kind of salt that every home needs? I believe as women, when you go to the market to buy salt, and that salt loses or has lost its saltiness, you will never take it home. So it is one day that when the Lord sees that I am not with any saltiness, I will never be permitted to enter into that home, that glorious and wonderful home. And that is why I need to ask myself, am I good for nothing or I am good for something? For us to understand this statement that, that the Lord posed here, we need to know how important salt is. Salt, number one, serves as a seasoning agent or a flavoring agent. Salt serves as a seasoning agent or a flavoring agent. Women, you will testify that whenever you put anything on fire by way of a food item, especially when you are preparing your soup, your stew, and whatever. When you add salt, immediately you add salt to the meat or to the fish or to whatsoever you are cooking. The room, the scent in that room will get changed. Why? Because it is something that brings out flavor. So God wants to see that kind of flavor coming out of you, coming out of me. What flavor are we putting in our very 
those places, whatever are we giving at our places? What sort of flavor do we give in our marriages, in our homes? What sort of flavor do we give in our hearts, in our minds? That is what God is asking of me and you. Is it a flavor that is good for nothing or is good for something? Can our salt bring out that good flavor? That even when someone is, you know, passing by our, our kitchen, passing behind our home, the person can smell something good and say, really, there is something good going on here. Or when our children, our husbands, are coming out from work, from school, immediately they get to the entrance of the home. They can smell something good, and they will begin to ask, oh, what is mommy doing? Oh, what is our mother doing? Are we giving that kind of flavor that the Lord requires of us? Are we good for nothing or we are good for something? Again, another important role that salt plays is that salt is a sweetening agent. Salt is a sweetening agent. In fact, when you are doing anything, when you are cooking, and you've not added salt, try and taste it. You see that the, the, the taste of the food wouldn't show up. But immediately, you place the right quantity of salt in that food. And you taste it. Your tongue, my tongue, will confess that something good is being cooked. It's a sweetening agent. The Lord wants to see us as sweetening agent. The world has decayed. The world has become so bitter. And God wants me to be a sweetening agent. In the world that I, I find myself, God wants you to be a sweetening agent as well. In that corner of the world that you find yourself. How do we speak to other people who are uh, uh, not believers? How do we behave towards them? We are the salt of the world. They are not sweet. And therefore they need you, they need me who are sweetening agents to bring some kind of sweetness in their lives. I pray that God Almighty today will help me to bring that sweetness in the life of people whose life is full of bitterness, whose life is not sweet at all, whose life is full of darkness, whose life the enemy is pushing into hell. May God use you and use me as a sweetening agent that we will be able to turn their lives around unto Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Another property of the salt is that the salt is a preserving agent. It's a preservative. Salt is a, present, a preserving agent. So when you go to many factories, when you go to many homes, and they want to you know, preserve something so that it will last long. One thing that they normally use or add is salt. Look at the kind of world that we find ourselves in. When the Lord was talking about this during the Beatitudes, during the Sermon on the Mount, it was so many years ago, the world had not then come to this level. But because he is, he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The God that knows the end from the beginning, he knew that a time is coming that the world will get to a decaying point that we will need a kind of soul to preserve the few that will be, you know, the saints of Christ Jesus. Are we serving the role as preservatives? Are we serving the role as, you know, preserving agents? Reverend Christians, we need to rise up. 
We need to serve that role. The world is, you know, getting rotten totally. Look at the kind of people that we have today. Women are naked, men are naked. Some pastors' wives are naked. Some pastors themselves are naked. Women leaders are naked. We need to bring them to that level that the Lord wants to see them as his own. And we will need the salt in you, the salt in me, that is Christ Jesus, to preserve their lives. The devil is pushing them. The devil is pushing them to their end. The devil is pushing them to their decaying end. And the Lord is looking for people like you and I to bring life into them, to preserve them. So that when the trumpet sounds, they together with us will have a chance in that glorious city. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his server, wherewith shall it be salted? Where can we use? If we be in the salt of the earth, if we lose our sweetness, our server, what at all can be used to bring sweetness in the, in the salt again, in the life of the Christian, in you and in me? May God Almighty help us that no matter whatever is happening, we will remain the salt of this earth. No matter the consequences that we are going to face at the workplace, at our homes, in our families, in the church where we find ourselves, brethren, let us stand out as the salt of the place. Hallelujah. Again, for the Lord to say we are the salt of the earth, he knowing what salt can do, knows that salt is a sanitizing or cleansing agent. Salt is a sanitizing or cleansing agent. So when you look around, the sanitizers that they have you know, prepared for us today that we use to clean our hands, they are full of salt. Salt is a sanitizing or cleansing agent. When we go to the hospitals, when we go to various places that they want to clean there, to make that place very good place, devoid of any germs and whatsoever, salt is always applied. It's a sanitizing agent. It's a cleansing agent. Can God use us assault to clean this rotten world the world is so rotten to the point that the world has attracted so many flies all over but god is be hoping on you god is still looking on to me that we will stand in the gap and therefore when we read from ezekiel chapter 22 the verse number 30, God himself said through the prophet Ezekiel, he told him he was looking for a man. He told him he was looking for a woman to stand in the gap so as not to bring his wrath upon this world, so as not to push many or many to be taken away into hellfire. But a certain, as the Lord stated here in Ezekiel 22, verse 30, He said, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Verse 31 
says, therefore have I poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with a fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God. May the Lord have mercy. Are we serving as cleansing agents in times like this? God is looking up to you. God is looking up to me. When you take your time and you read the scriptures, you see that there were so many people that had this opportunity that you are having, I'm having now. But because they could not take good care of it, because they could not preserve their saltiness, because they could not serve as the salt of their world as at that time, and they lost their saltiness. Today, they are languishing in hellfire. May the Lord forbid that on your part and on my part in Jesus Christ's mighty name. When we read from 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 7 following, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 7 following, especially verse 18 and 19, and then verse 23, and verse 26 and 29. 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 15. When the Lord God Almighty chose Saul to be the king of Israel as the first king, God was hoping in him that he would rally his people after God. God was hoping on him that he would open. But what do we see here? God sent the king Saul go among the Amalekites, kill all of them because of what they did to my people when they were coming from bondage. And the Bible says, when King Saul went, he did what pleased him. By killing whatsoever that he wanted to kill and sparing whatsoever that he wanted to spare. He spared the king Agag. He spared the fat you know, animals, the cow and then the, 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 the goat and sheep. And when we take our time to read verse 19, when Samuel, the prophet, came to him and asked him, Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil and did evil in the sight of God, of the Lord? And so said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. And I've gone the way which the Lord sent me. And I've brought Agag the king of Amalek. And I've utterly destroyed the Amalekites. The God says he should spare the king of the Amalekites. The God says he was to spare certain animals. God asked him to be the salt in Israel against the Amalekite as at that time. But he refused to do that. Today, I don't know what the Lord has asked of you. You don't know what the Lord has asked of me. But I know of one thing, that God is looking for you and I to be the salt of this earth in this end time so that we will be able to bring many souls into his kingdom. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that no matter what you are being confronted with, no matter what I'm being confronted with, we will live to expectation. We will live as the salt of this earth. We will live as pleasing aroma unto God, not unto men. We will live not even to please our very self, 
Apostle Paul then again says in Galatians chapter 1, verse number 10, he says, Galatians 1 10, that is it men that he wants to draw unto himself? Or is it God that he wants to save? He said, if it's men that he wants to draw unto himself, but if not unto God, then he is not a servant of God. Brethren, we need to be very careful. The Lord is coming and is looking forward to see that I will be able to serve as the soul that he has placed me in Ghana here to bring many into his kingdom. The Lord is looking unto you, wherever you are today, be the salt over there. Please let us not be the salt in the presence of God. No, God doesn't want to see us as being salt in his presence. He said we are the salt of the earth. We are the salt of the world. We are the salt of our workplaces. We are the salt of our uh, uh, you know, homes. We are the salt of our families. Let us be the salt over there. Many Christians today have turned to be the salt in the presence of God. When we go before God, there we you know, profess Christ, there we, 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 we demonstrate our love. But God is looking up unto us that we will be the salt of the world. I pray that the Lord will never allow me even for five minutes when I sit down without thinking about the lost souls, without knowing that I am the salt of this world. And I pray same into your life, that you will never have peace when you stay without being the salt of the world that you find yourself. Hallelujah. The king saw lost his salt. His, I mean, that, that, that saltiness in him, he lost it because he wanted to please men. That is another dangerous thing for us. Because we want to be men pleasers, many of us are losing our saltiness. He lost his salt. He lost his kinship. And not did he lose his kinship alone, he lost his life. He committed suicide as the first king of the nation of Israel, a nation that God has a covenant with them, a king that the, 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 the man of God Samuel prophesied upon his life. Look at his end. Look at the way he ended up Look at how, uh, you know, through suicide. And we all know, anyone that commits suicide can never make it to heaven. Today, this king is languishing in hell. I pray that you and I will never go there. We will live as the salt of this lost world. We will live as the salt to preserve this world. We will live as the salt to sanitize, to cleanse this world. We will live as the salt of who will bring flavor into this world that is full of bitterness and pains. When you take your time and study the life of Judas Iscariot, he moved with the Lord God Almighty, the creator of the entire earth. He lived with him. He dined with him. He slept with the Lord. He walked with the Lord. But brethren, when he became covetous, he lost the saltiness in him. He could not see that great, you know, Yahweh that he was moving with. He went for this little amount. Whereas he was having the great king himself with him. Oh, how, how I, I, I wish that all of us will come to this realization that we are the salt of this world in this end time. Though we may not be many, brethren, it took only 12 
apostles. When Judas was taken out, there was a re replacement. It took only 12 apostles to bring this wonderful gospel into the entire world. Though they died many years ago, but because they maintained their saltiness, today we are still mentioning their name. Today we are still having this great gospel. That is what God wants of you and wants of me. That is what God expects of us. That is what God wants us to do and to be. That we will be the salt of this world. Judas also lost his saltiness. The very moment he went and sold the savior of this world, he lost his saltiness. And we all know his ending. He also died a very suicidal death. He hung himself and died a miserable death. And today he is also languishing in hell. Hell is never your portion, it's never my portion. No. If only we will continue to live as the salt of this world. Praise the Lord. How do we then preserve and restore our saltiness? If even we have lost our saltiness or a bit of it, how do we restore it? And even if we are still having the, the saltiness in us, how do we also preserve it? One, through genuine repentance. If only we repent of all the disobedience, of all the sins that we've committed, or we are still committing, committing in our hearts, in our minds. Some of us physically, we wouldn't do any evil thing. But what do we think of? What is the thought? What is within our hearts? If we genuinely repent. For the Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, it says, if only we will confess our sins, if only we will accept that we are sinners. Confess it. This great God is so merciful, he's so righteous to forgive us and cleanse us of all filthiness, of all sin. Proverbs 28, 18 also tells us that if only we will never cover our sins, God will have mercy upon us. Hallelujah. So for us to preserve and restore our saltiness so that God can use us the way he wants to use us, brethren, we need to have genuine repentance. Repentance that will enable Christ Jesus to take us along if he is to, you know, blow the trumpet right now. Repentance that will leave no reservation in our lives. Repentance that will take away every spot and wrinkles in our garments. Again, for us to preserve and restore our saltiness as we are the salt of this world. And when we lose our saltiness, the Bible says there is nothing again. There is no importance of us than to be, you know, thrown away and be trodden upon by men. I pray that you and you, the evil people, the devil and his agents, would trodden upon us. It will never happen. They will never tread upon us. They will not. They will not. Because we are going to live up to expectation. We are going to be the salt of this world. Again, if we want to preserve and to, you know, uh, 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 restore our saltiness, we need to do that through sincere prayer and fasting. Sincere prayer and fasting. When we read Second Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14 and 15, 
The Bible says, if my people call by my name, people like you and I, upon which God's name has been placed, people like you and I, that are called the children of God, he says, if we will repent of our sins, let me quickly read that. Second Chronicles chapter 7, 14 and 15. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. And then again, the verse 15 says, now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. So if only we who are called the children of God will go into sincere fasting and prayer, if only we'll humble ourselves, pray and seek the face of God, to, you know, help us preserve. I know some of us are going through so many challenges, especially those of you in the other part of the world. Your world is so, di- you know, uh, do I say that? No, no, it's so controversial. Your world is so challenging. Even those of us here, our world is so challenging because of holiness. I know you are also going through challenges. But when we humble ourselves in fasting and prayer, sincere one, grace shall be given unto us. For the Lord Jesus that we are following, when he wanted to live up to expectation, when he came into this world and he was 100% man and 100% God, he humbled himself in fasting and prayer and grace was released unto him. May God Almighty release grace unto us that we will be able to continue to serve as the salt of this world without losing our saltiness. Hallelujah. Again, through genuine holiness and righteousness, through genuine holy living and righteous living, We need to be people who are full of holiness and righteousness. Without it, as we all know, no man, no woman, no pastor, no bishop, no whatsoever can take us into that celestial city. We need to be people who are holy. So the psalmist says in Psalm 24, verse 3 and 4, when he posed the question, who at all can climb the mountain of the living God? Psalm 24, verse 3 and 4. He says, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. For us to have clean hands, pure hearts, and a, 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 a soul without vanity and without deceitfulness, it means we have the soul of Christ Jesus in us. We need the saltiness of Christ Jesus. So for us to be able to continue to preserve our saltiness and to even restore whatsoever saltiness that we have lost. We need to have genuine holiness. Please, not a fake one, not a hypocritical one, where people will see me, people will hear me preaching holiness, but without living it. I pray that God Almighty will help us, that we will be, you know, people who really live holy and righteous lives. Again, if we want to preserve our saltiness, we need to be 
students of the word of God. We need to be students of the word of God. And not being students of the word of God that is studying the word of God alone, but anchoring our lives with the word and living it always. We need to anchor our lives. If a ship is anchored at the shore of the port and no you know, way can move it away, then we also need to anchor our ship. We also need to anchor our saltiness with the word of God so that no wind of doctrine can take us aback. No wind of doctrine can destroy our lives. Praise the Lord. So when we read from John chapter 15, the gospel, according to St. John, chapter 15, verse number um, 7, John 15, 7, the law says, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. If we abide in him, and his words abide in us, that is where we can preserve the saltiness. Brethren, the time is coming. It wouldn't be easy for people who are fake holiness people to stand. The world will surely show us up. They will, they, they will, they will find us out. Our lives will show us up. But when we have the word of God dwelling in us and we anchor our lives to the word of God, when we have the saltiness of the word in us, whether in good times or in bad times, then surely, no matter what happens, we will continue to live for the Lord. We will continue to strive. We will continue to walk on the narrow way. We will continue to serve God no matter what people will do unto us. I pray today that we will be the salt of this earth. I pray today that our saltiness will never leave us. I pray today that the saltiness word and every has deposited in you in me will continue even to grow the more. The people will be attracted to that. Hallelujah. So that is why we need to anchor our lives with the word of God. When God was sending Joshua to replace Moses the prophet then, in Joshua chapter 1, what did the Lord say? He did not give him any, uh, what do you call it, oil. He did not give him any um, anointed water. He did not give him anything. In fact, Moses was having a rod, but Joshua was not having a rod. What the Lord God Almighty gave to Joshua was that salt found in his word. So in Joshua chapter 1, verse 6 to 8, Joshua chapter 1, verse 6 to 8, God says, be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the Lord. Only be strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee, turn not from it to the right or to the left, that thou mayest prosper with, uh, whithersoever thou goest, whithersoever that you go. When you anchor yourself with a saltiness in the word of God, if we do not become selective Christians, that select certain portion of the Bible that suits us and cast the rest out, but we believe the word of God holistically and we live and we practice it, I tell you, your saltiness, my saltiness will never depart from us. Hallelujah. 
And God went again further to tell Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Hallelujah. So that is God's way of helping us to preserve the salt in us. My dear one, my beloved in Christ Jesus, God has deposited you there and I here as the salt of this end time. We need to sweeten the people that we are moving along with. We need to sweeten the family we find ourselves. We need to sweeten the environment that we live in. We need to sanitize the communities. We need to bring sun so that when the day of reckoning comes, none of us, none I say, will be found wanting. Let me bring us some two lessons here before even I run up the message that the Lord has given us as the salt of the world. There is something that we need to know. A lesson, if even you, you couldn't hear anything at all, let, let these two lessons be with you and be with me as well. Remember, Though a man's soul is of great importance to God, the soul of a man, the soul of every human being, is of great importance to God because in his own image and likeness, he created us, as Genesis 1 26 tells us. But let us remember, if any human being refuses to maintain our saltiness by serving him faithfully, we are good for nothing. And therefore, he will throw us into hellfire. That is what the Lord meant by will be thrown for men to trodden upon us. That is what God meant by that. When we refuse to be the very image and likeness of God. He says the sword that loses its saltiness will be thrown in. A man will tread on it. It's with us. When we refuse to be the salt of God, when we, we, we lose the saltiness in us, we will be thrown at the fact that we are the image and the likeness of God. We will be thrown into hellfire. May the Lord forbid that that none of us will go to that portion, that area, that, that tormenting area. It's not meant for us. So that is a lesson for us to know that if salt will be thrown away for men to tread upon it, then human beings, our souls, will be thrown into hell when we lose it, our saltiness. When, let's remember, when Adam and Eve, who were the only human being, there wasn't any human being who has then set down some example for them to follow. They were the only human being God was having. But when they disobeyed God, when they lost their, their saltiness in the Garden of Eden, God did not consider Adam and their wife. He threw them out of the garden. So who am I? Who are my parents? That the Lord will just, you know, clap for me that I've done well by losing my saltiness and he will welcome me into that great city. May God have mercy upon us that we will not be the sword that has lost its saltiness so that men will tread upon us in hellfire. Again, another point that I want us to take note of 
is that when we lose the saltiness in us, we lose our placement. Let me put it in another way. Lost of worth. Lost of worth. When we lose how worthy we are, the loss of worth is equal to loss of placement. Loss of worth is equal to loss of placement. So our heavenly placement will get lost if we lose our saltiness. When we lose our saltiness, our placement in heaven will get lost. We can never have it. And that is what I meant by loss of worth is equal to loss of placement. The Lord has built a great city and great mansions waiting for us. Brethren, beloved in Christ Jesus, let us do everything possible with the grace that he has given unto us to maintain our saltiness and to share this salt with others so that we will not lose our placement in heaven. Last point, but not the least, that I want us to consider. It must be noticed that it takes our earthly relevance in Christ. It takes our earthly relevance in Christ to secure a heavenly earth. That is one thing that we need to know. If we become in earth, it takes our relevance in Christ Jesus on this earth to secure a heavenly approval. And that is why the Lord said, ye are the salt of the earth. We, we are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his server, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. When we lose our relevance, when the salt loses its relevance in Christ on this earth, heaven can never approve us. Heaven can never accept us. Even the earth, we have lost our relevance. How much more heaven? I pray today that we will be the salt of this world. Brethren, it's left with a few moments for our Lord Jesus to show himself up in the skies. But those that have salt in them are those that can meet him there because he is also full of that same salt. So when we have that, that, the salt that he has given us in us, likes, we say they attract to each other. We will attract be attracted unto him. And the Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3, when we are able to maintain our saltiness, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 to 3, it says, Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God, the daughters of God. Therefore the world knoweth, knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we sons of God, and it doeth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. May God Almighty help us 
that as we continue to serve as the salt of this world, we will never be people that will go out, but will remain very relevant in Christ. Again, the question is, are we good for nothing or we are good for something? May God bless us in Christ Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Brethren, can we pray? At this point in time, you know your stand in the Lord, I know mine. Let us go before the Lord that we will continue to be the salt of this world. In the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, in the night, May God help us that we will be the salt of this world. May we pray and ask him for the grace to hold on and to preserve the saltiness in us. May we pray unto him that he was able to maintain his saltiness even on the cross. May God help us also. Shall we begin to pray? Father Lord Jesus, Father, Lord help us. Jesus Christ, my name. Brethren, we are praying again. We have lost our saltiness. May God Almighty replace that for us. May the Lord breathe anew into us the saltiness of each and every one that has got lost. Shall we begin to pray again? We are asking Lord, I if you are looking for someone, Thank you for a moment like this. Thank you that we are the salt of the world. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.
Father, Lord, we thank you. We bless your name today that just by your grace, we who were not part of the main tree, you chose to graft us. Not by grafting us alone, but Lord, you have made us the salt of this earth. Lord Jesus, your name be praised forever. Father, here we are praying, pleading with you, O God Almighty, that if we have lost some value of our saltiness, or we have lost our saltiness completely, we plead with you today. Refill us, O God, with your saltiness. Touch our lives, O God, that wherever we find ourselves, we will be able to bring flavor. We will be able to bring sanity. We will be able to cleanse the place. We will be able to preserve lives. The many lives that are dying into hellfire, Lord Jesus, will be saved through us by your grace. I pray for my beloved brethren over there. Be with us all. Help us to do our bit in this end time so that on the final day, when we all meet up there, we'll have something to talk about. I thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we are prayed. Amen.